In the lead up to the next federal election, there are many grassroots organizations who are organizing the public and informing the public about the per pertinent issues in the next election. And one that is especially important is, is the Anti-Terrorism Act, Bill C-51. The following is a clip I want you to watch from openmedia.ca about this bill, and afterwards we will discuss it with one of their spokespersons. So have a look. Hey there, Canada. It's your friends at Open Media here. We have good news and bad news. The bad news is that we have a serious privacy problem in our country. Our government is undermining our right to privacy like never before, letting spy agencies creep all over our private internet use. We're talking about a range of authorities monitoring your activities at any time without a warrant. They're passing reckless new laws that will make matters even worse. They're trying to create a secret police force with the power to censor your free speech if they don't like what you say. They're spending billions of your taxpayer dollars on a spy palace. They think they need to keep an eye on you. That's right, you. More than 785,000 ordinary Canadians have been victims of breaches, despite having never broken the law. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. Tens of thousands of you spoke out and helped create our crowdsourced privacy report. You came up with three key recommendations to fix the problem and restore our Canadian right to privacy. Here's what you had to say. Get a warrant. The government should get a warrant to spy on people. They need a warrant to tap your phone or to read your mail. They should need one to look at your online activities too. End mass surveillance, including bulk collection of metadata, the hidden bits of information that can reveal almost everything about your private life. Embrace accountability. Other countries have independent committees overseeing spy agencies. Canada should too. It's pretty simple, and it's what matters most to you. That's why we want you to go to privacyplan.ca and add your voice to the growing chorus that is endorsing our privacy plan. We know that when we speak out together, we can make a difference. We forced the government to back down on reckless spying before, we can do it again. Together, we can make Canada a leader in privacy protection for the digital age. Go to privacyplan.ca right now and add your voice. Then share this video to spread the word. That was a recent video from uh, openmedia.ca. Uh, my name is Mr. Ed and I'm uh, here to discuss the Bill C-51, which that video portrays. I'm here with uh, Laura Tribe from the Toronto office of Open Media to discuss this uh, bill, which had been passed by the Senate and the Parliament and uh, is going to be or has been declared into law. Uh, the upcoming election, uh, could uh, portend the future of this bill because the several opposition parties have declared that they will uh, repeal the bill if elected. So it's kind of an important issue for everyone to be aware of and to uh, decide for themselves what is most important to them. And uh, Laura certainly has the information at her fingertips and I invite you to also go to their website and do a Google search or other information uh, about this, uh, this particular bill. This bill is available on the website and uh, if, you're a, if you're a lawyer you probably will enjoy reading it. If you're not you'll have to skip through some of the gobbledygook and find some information that makes sense to you. So, um, so without further ado, here's Laura. So Bill C-51, or the Anti-Terrorism Act 2015, is a highly controversial piece of legislation that was introduced by the Conservatives of January of this year. Uh, the bill has been falsely presented by the government as a necessity to keep Canadians safe. Uh, but the bill was met with extreme criticism and challenges from Canadians as it was rushed through the House and forced through the Senate until it was passed in June. Um, although the bill is presented as being in the interest of national security, it doesn't in fact keep Canadians safe, but actually puts us in you know, more danger, as some have argued. Um, it's an incredibly large bill, it changes a number of existing laws, it adds a number of other laws, and it threatens our rights and freedoms as protected under the Charter. Uh, it's over extremely overreaching, it attempts to expand our government agency's national security powers, but in doing so, it actually tramples on the rights of Canadians without bringing any value to our own safety and security. Um, I read through a bit of the Act, and uh, in Section 12.1.3, it says, 
The service shall not take measures to reduce a threat to the security of Canada if those measures will contravene a right or freedom guaranteed by the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms or will be contrary to other Canadian law unless the service is authorized to take them by a warrant issued under Section 211. Um, should we feel uh, fuzzy and secure with that statement in there? I wish that was the case. Um, our most basic charter rights are being threatened by Bill C-51. Uh, free expression, the right to assembly and association, our right to privacy. C-51 contains measures that enable the government to remove online content or even delete websites from the internet, uh, directly undermining our freedom of expression and freedom of thought. Uh, but in addition to that, there are a number of sections within the bill that are really vaguely worded that have a lot of loopholes, I guess you could call them, for them to get around these charter rights. Uh, we've actually seen court, ch court challenges filed already um, against this bill in ways that it has violated our rights. So there are clearly very strong arguments to be made that this is a violation of our charter rights, and we'll have to wait to see how that plays out. Uh, but in the meantime, the, wor the, the wording of the bill is incredibly vague, uh, and there are a number of ways that they can get around that, that it does still violate a number of our rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is kind of vague because it says uh, if it threatens uh, security or the economic or the, uh, the justice system in Canada, well, you know, that's pretty vague. So it could be, and, and if you have to fight that in court, a citizen doesn't have the resources that the government has, so it's not likely to uh, be a successful, fair fight. Um, the, one of the biggest problems with this bill I've heard is it has no oversight. And I also heard of the G8 countries who have similar legislation on the books. Canada is the only one without an authority to oversee what's, being, what's happening under this bill. Is that true? Yeah, so the oversight for Canadians and intelligence agencies at this point is CERC, which has been uh, increasingly had its budget cut and has very little capacity to actually maintain and monitor uh, the actions of the agencies that it oversees. Uh, with Bill C-51, we've actually seen that there is less oversight being enforced with this new legislation and a lot more information sharing that's taking place that requires that oversight. So not only does it further empower these agencies to act without a warrant or without needing those oversights and judicial processes that we would expect, uh, but it also now allows up to 17 different government agencies to share your information without a warrant or without any need or cause uh, and without any oversight. So there's a lot of problems that are being already ex are already in existence that are being actually exacerbated by Bill C-51 with even less oversight and even less accountability to these agencies. Besides threats to Canada's well-being, this bill also covers threats to other countries as well. So let's say uh, if you wanted to protest Israel's actions in the Gaza or U.S. drone strikes targeting civilians, it's conceivable you could be prosecuted under the auspices of this law. So it casts a pretty wide net. On May 30th of this year, I noticed that there was a large demonstration all across Canada, and uh, Open Media uh, has this information on their website, and I wonder if they were solely responsible for this or they had help from other groups. Uh, Open Media has been working against Bill C-51 since pretty much the day it was introduced. Um, we've been active throughout the campaign, uh, running a campaign throughout the bill's lifespan, and will continue to uh, even since it's been passed. But we've been working with grassroots organizations across the country, other civil society groups, uh, with lawyers, with unions, uh, and a number of different advocates to uh, spread the news, basically, that this is a terrible bill and the way that it will actually impact Canadians. So we played a large role in helping to organize, uh, but there's a number of other groups and organizations that took part in that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you think this will, might, um, uh, might impact the upcoming election, this issue of C-51? Is it, is it broad enough? Are people aware of it? Uh, will it change their vote just on the basis of that bill? Yeah, I think this bill has already shown to be a really big issue in the upcoming election. Um, I mean, we even saw in the very first debate, Justin Trudeau admitted that his stance was naive, perhaps, uh, the way that he approached C-51 from the start. I think it's really clear that C-51 and Canadians' privacy are going to be really key issues throughout this election. Uh, I think that the best way for Canadians to have our rights and our privacy uh, respected and restored is going to be to repeal this bill entirely. And that's the campaign that Open Media is working on throughout this election, is to actually uh, push Canadians to speak up against this bill and to hold politicians accountable to our rights and our privacy and encourage uh, 
Canadians to vote as such, but also to encourage politicians to listen to what Canadians are looking for. I think we have a real chance in this election to have our voices heard as Canadians and to hold our politicians accountable. And that's what we're hoping will take place throughout this campaign period. So I think that there's a lot of problems with these huge overreaching bills. We had lawyers that were studying this bill for weeks on end, reading it 12, 14 hours a day, but still at the end of two months, we're not entirely certain of what would be legal or what wouldn't throughout this bill. And I think this is not the only case that we've seen of that. So hopefully um, it's been one case of really getting Canadians engaged on the issues in, that impact them and that people will show up to vote on election day. Thank you, Laura. Now we have a lot more information about Bill C-51 to make an informed decision, hopefully, in the next election. And I thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks for having me.